Welcome everyone to this short video that's just going to discuss ultrasound guided cannulation. What we're going to go through is a quick look at ultrasound and the different types of probes that we have in practice. We're then going to go through the technique for using ultrasound to help guide our cannulations and just include some tips and tricks to try and improve your performance. So just to start off then, so Generally, we use ultrasound guided cannulation for patients who require IV access, obviously, but have very poor vasculature. Now, commonly, these are patients who might be very shocked or very sort of peripherally shut down for whatever, whatever reason. Might also be obese or edematous patients. And the third sort of big group that we use this in is those who have had multiple previous cannulations. There, we're thinking about intravenous drug users, about chemotherapy patients, for example, who have repeated cannulations. So moving on, just to have a quick chat about ultrasound. Ultrasound uses high frequency sound waves transmitted from the probe and then reflected back to help visualize structures in real time. Now structures obviously look differently depending on what they are and their consistency and density. So bone, fat and, and some stones often appear very bright, so very white. Cartilage and muscle and other sort of soft tissues like that are, are relatively dark. And then fluid filled structures, i.e. mainly veins, arteries and, and things like cysts, uh, are black. Now, there are several probes that you'll, you'll come across in practice, those being the linear, curvilinear, cardiac, and endocavitory probes. The linear probe is the one that we're going to be using in the session, and the one that we're going to be using for ultrasound-guided cannulation. It's good for looking at vascular structures, um, and we can also use it to look at uh, the superficial aspects of the pleura and lungs. The curvilinear probe is useful for looking at abdominal structures particularly, and also looking at the lungs and the pleura. The cardiac probe, as, it, as the name suggests, is uh, essentially an echo probe, which is used to look at the heart, and you can use it to look at the IVC as well. And the final probe is the endocavitory probe, which is generally inserted either rectally or, or vaginally, generally used in early pregnancy to look at the, so the uterus and the gynecological structures. Now, when you're using the ultrasound probes, depending on your model, but most probes have a, a small dot or a, a little line on one of the sides of the, the plastic structure. This corresponds to a dot normally on the left side of the of the screen as you visualize it. Now this just allows you to essentially line up your movements. So you want to be in a position where lateral movements of the probe, for example, occur laterally on the screen uh, and obviously vice versa. Now again, depending on the machine that you're using, there's lots of buttons, lots of controls, but there's only a really a few that you're going to need to, to play with. Those are the, the gain, which is essentially the, the brightness of the screen, the brightness of the structures. The depth of the image, i.e. how much of it you can see on the screen, so how far down that image goes. And the Doppler button, which normally brings up a little box, which helps show flow through structures. And we can use that to help distinguish veins from arteries. So moving on to more of the cannulation side of it then. So the indications, contraindications, complications, they're all the same as for normal cannulation. So I won't go through that now. And instead, we're just going to look at how you actually do it. So one of the key things you need to get right is the positioning of the patient and the positioning of yourself. Now you need to be able to ensure that the ultrasound machine or at least the, the screen is in your line of sight. Also, you obviously want the patient's uh, arm or leg or limb or whatever. You obviously want the patient's uh, limb in your line of sight as well. And you want to make sure that your equipment, i.e. your cannulation tray, is also reachable. As ever, make sure the patient is comfortable you may need to use a pillow to support the limb or perhaps get a colleague to hold. So once you've set up, get a tourniquet on and we use a reasonable amount of, of sterile gel on the probe. It's obviously important to clean the skin for infection control purposes and that's why we ideally using sterile gel to reduce that infection risk. Now what you need to do is line up the probe holding it transversely with your non-dominant hand. Use your dominant hand for your, your cannulation hand and essentially just go hunting for veins. We generally start in the antecubital fossa uh, but ultimately, any vein is uh, is satisfactory. As I say, we generally start in the ACF. You can try and find some some deeper veins there and, uh, and track up into sort of more of the humerus area, or track down if there's a decent forearm vein. But if it has to be in a slightly atypical position, then any access is better than no access. How do you distinguish a vein from an artery on ultrasound? Well, veins will collapse when you apply pressure to them, whereas arteries won't. So that's one useful way to work out if it's a vein or an artery. The other way that I mentioned before is the use of the Doppler. So veins generally have, have no flow or very slow flow uh, of blood going through them, whereas arteries have a pulsatile flow that's quite easy to distinguish. That, and that can be a useful way to distinguish smaller, deeper arteries or branches of arteries. Now, it's important not to try and press too hard on the patient because A, it's uncomfortable, B, it'll also collapse the target vein. So get used to 
using relatively light pressure. Now what you need to do is essentially find a suitable vein. That's one with sufficient diameter and also is going to be straight enough to hold it and hold a cannula. Once you've done that, you've got two real options as to what to do with the probe. So you continue holding it in, in the transverse plane, or you can switch to using the longitudinal plane. There's advantages and disadvantages to both of those. If you stay in the transverse vein, it's very easy to line up the middle of the vein with the middle of the cannula. But the issue there is that you often lose the visualization of the, of the needle tip as you go th through the skin and soft tissues. And it can be difficult to, to directly visualize the, the needle tip entering the, the vein. Whereas in the longitudinal way, you get better visualization of the needle throughout the entire uh, procedure. But often it's difficult to line up that cannula with, with the middle of the vessel. And if it's a slightly smaller vessel, then you might inadvertently miss it or only partially enter it. Personally, I prefer to, to stay in the transverse plane throughout the entire procedure. Practice with both techniques. Find one you're most comfortable with uh, would be my advice. Now, generally, we're going to be using a decent sized cannula unless the vein is very superficial. I'd probably recommend using a green cannula for most of these patients, particularly if they're very edematous or if the vein's very deep. You're going to need a long enough cannula to be able to get into the vessel to start with. So using a, a pink or a blue is unlikely to reach a lot of the time. But essentially what you do is you line up that cannula with the probe. Keep an eye on the screen as you're going through the soft tissue. And you can either directly observe the cannula entering the vessel, in which case you know you're in, and slash or checking for flashback in the cannula like you would with the normal cannulation technique. Once you're in, obviously, you're going to secure it. You're going to take any bloods off that you need to. Make sure it flushes appropriately as well, because if it doesn't, you're not going to be able to use it and you're going to have to find an alternative vein. So that's it, really. That's all I wanted to, do, to go through. So just to sum up, then, ultrasound guided cannulation is a useful skill to have. It's something that's becoming more common in practice and some of the junior doctors are are using more frequently. As ever, I'd advise that you get as much practice as possible, be that in clinical skills or on placement, and just get used to, to holding the probe and using the probe.